you have any comments? Oh, uh, I just had an interesting thought. Go on. This thing about e-government. Yeah. Um, just I read a I read an article in Harper's about a year ago, maybe two years ago. It's, it said that one of the reasons the property uh, bubble exploded was because all the banks put the the property records were transformed into electronic property records, which presumably made it much more efficient at like buying and selling and trading, but also sort of destroyed the the sort of physical record that was in fact necessary. So I thought yeah. that I just sort of got struck by this interesting parallel about, uh, you know, if you transform government these electronic things, the same thing might occur. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, that's very much what uh, Ed is doing oh. uh, in health records, oh, as really? health records. Um, and she's trying to look at what actually makes it, uh, what, you know, what, what's important, what prevents it exploding. This guy, idolatry and new government, is actually looking one step behind that or deeper than that uh, on the idea of um, what is it, what is the attitude that caused the banks to do this in the first place? Huh. And what is the attitude that caused the users outside the banks to accept it. So what is the attitude in India that caused the Indian government to go, or the whatever government it is, uh, US government, Canadian government, to go to into, pile into electronic government? And what is the attitude that the IT suppliers have in the promises they make? And what is the attitude that the public have in mm. accepting it? And it's kind of an idolatry of technology. Yeah, yeah. But there's a lot, it'd be very interesting to do a case study on this explosion and to see what really happened right from the beginning of the attitude that caused it to happen in the first place. And then what actually made it go wrong. It's probably some of these down to earth issues that are often hidden. And are not obvious, and you don't get them by going, going and uh, doing questionnaires. Yeah. Well, it seems with the with the financial crisis, it, it, it just completely separated from the physical reality. Right? It just, yeah. You see, why why is that a problem? Can you explain why it's a problem convincingly? Um, well, in, in the in the little piece I wrote, I argued that there there were there were these rituals that they used to do when they. When you, when you know when you trade property, you have to trust the person you're trading the property with, right? So they would, they would, uh, for example, they would tie the promissory note to the deed. They would tie it together right. with a ribbon, and yeah. And what the banks did was they, they didn't, you know, this is law. You have to do this, but they, they made the promissory notes all promissory notes to the exact same electronic company. So every every no, every sort of mortgage in the entire country was then basically mortgaged to the same company, which was basically just a shell company where they would then buy and trade these, uh, cut these mortgages up into a thousand different pieces and repackage them however they wanted. So that the sort of physical ritual was void of significance and then it was just turned in, and it became very efficient but ultimately there's no trust between the, the trust was broken, right? Yeah. So. Ah, I've, I've forgotten one guy, McGibbon. He is coming to do a PhD on trust, huh. internet trust. Internet trust in the sense of how we trust each other over yeah. the... Yeah, oh, what okay. is trust? Yeah. Um, and originally he was doing work on trying to calculate trust electronically. Um, but he realized that in real life, trust is much richer than that and Doivier's aspects help him understand it. Oh. Now what you said, you talked about physical rituals. Um, and it sounds to me as though the person that was saying this, whether it's you or whether it's the guy who wrote the, wrote the article, um, so fixed on this as the solution, that as the me. label. Yeah, yeah, that was my. Uh, oh, it was yours, actually. Yeah, it was a label to label a whole bunch of stuff. Physical and ritual is physical aspect and mystic aspect, faith aspect. Uh -huh. But actually, what you're talking about is trust. Yeah, which is um, faith aspect and ethical aspect. Promissory note, juridical aspect, the flexibility issue, uh, and 
is a formative aspect, and there's a lot of aspects in there that are, you might use that as a label for, but the label te to me tends to hide rather than reveal what's actually going on. Uh, I guess um, well, the, the, the other thought that I had was in terms of like, if, if there, I mean, if the ritual does have a significance that, that's lost, and, mm. and certainly in government too, right? Like, well, if you sort of, if you do the same thing to government and the, and the rituals whereby we, you know, like an election and things like this, yeah. those yeah. rituals are doing something, and then, so if you turn it up into electronic, it seems, seems like a, maybe a poor idea. Well, yeah. um, self, be self-critical about your use of the word ritual. Huh. Where, where does it come from? Why do you use ritual, for example, rather than the habit? Why do you like the word ritual rather than habit? What cultural background caused you to do that? Yeah, uh, it's it's funny. The, the cultural background I'm from has no understanding for ritual whatsoever. So the, exactly, the, there's a... you're probably um, operating in this. Hmm. That they they have no understanding of rituals. Therefore, ritual is a lovely thing. A new discovery. Something like that? It's conceivable. It, it is conceivable, but it... it hmm. Often we react against uh, what we've been used to. And then go to the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. And often it's, it's a reaction according to one of these, or linked to one of these. What Diabetes Aspects allow us to do is well, it allows us to do this, but then if we can, once we've done this and satisfied ourselves in doing what we like, then, then turn our gaze on ourselves and think, what do I really mean by this? What actually is it that works? And it's the aspects, opening it up with the aspects that opens up the meaning behind the label that we like to put on. So we all do this, but I'm challenging you to go not be satisfied with this, but to go through the diversity of aspects that are behind this. And often these are the down, these are sort of, if you like, the down to earth hidden issues. And when I asked you, you actually came up with quite a lot um, of different things. I didn't have time to put them all down. No, no. It's no. quite rich what you said. So you knew it, but you didn't knew the stuff. I guess the, I mean, the concern for me is that, like, um, uh, in terms of dialogue, right? So when we, when we, when you ask the, say, the the, the, the veterinarian for the first time, the veterinarian will, will give you, like, I, I deal with the biotic aspect and I deal with the economic yeah. aspect, right? Ooh, that's the, that's the initial response, and it, there's a certain truth to it. And then you know, you talk for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you talk for a few hours, and eventually it turns out that the veterinarian's dealing with with all the aspects. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. So it, as a revelation to them. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 really wonderful. And they're really that, thankful for <laughs> for having <laughs> spent the time. Yeah, and there's there's probably yeah, it's a revelation, right? Like the person has come to understand themselves and the world in a, in a deeper and richer way. Yeah, yeah. But but I guess when when people.